You know, I was reading in the book of Joshua recently the very end of Joshua's life. In fact, the third to last verse in the last chapter of Joshua, chapter 24, says this. In verse 31, And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who survived Joshua and had known all the deeds of the Lord which he had done for Israel. In other words, it was very common to pass down from generation to generation all of the miracles and wonders that God had done throughout Israel's history. And yet when we turn over to the book of Judges and it's a recalling of the death of Joshua, listen to what the writer of the book of Judges says in the second chapter, verse 10. And all that generation also were gathered to their fathers And there arose another generation after them who did not know the Lord, nor yet the work which he had done for Israel. Isn't that amazing? That every generation was responsible, had to take on the mantle of passing down the wonders and miracles, the great work of the Lord. And yet now we're faced with a generation that doesn't know the Lord. In fact, in the very next verse, in verse 11, it gets worse. It says, then the sons of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals, the false gods. We find that in Judges chapter 2, in chapter 3, in chapter 4, in chapter 6, in chapter 10, and in chapter 13. It says in verse 12, they forsook the Lord, the God of their fathers who had brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods from among the gods of the people who were around them and bowed themselves down to them and thus provoked the Lord to anger. So they forsook the Lord and served Baal and the Ashtaroth. It's amazing how we are really one generation away from that happening again. My challenge to us this morning as we have been around family and friends probably more than than we've been in the past is what are we doing to prevent that? Those who know the Lord and are walking closely with him, what are we doing to those around us, especially family members? And if I could get close to grandparents and parents this morning, what are we doing to help the next generation marvel at the wonders of the Lord. You know, we have the Bible, which Joshua and his people did not have. And so I'm asking myself, Greg, are you demonstrating to your children, to those around you, that you're in God's word, reading God's word, loving God's word, not just on Sunday mornings, but day after day? It's interesting because in verse 14 of chapter 2, The writer says, and the anger of the Lord burned against Israel. And we see this throughout the book of Judges. There is uh, evil, there's rebellion, and then there's discipline. Here's what I love about the character of God. It's found in verse 16. It says, then the Lord raised up judges who delivered Israel from the hands of those who plundered them. Seems like a rather simple verse, but if you really think about it with the backdrop of all what Israel was doing, to the Lord, right in front of the Lord, how they were disrespecting him and rebelling against him time and time again, that he would raise up judges who would deliver them from the hands of those who plundered them. You know what I simply conclude? That that's just grace in action. That is God saying once again to his beloved, his nation, I will do something that you can't do. I will provide for you a way out. You know, today, I think God's doing the same thing. He's providing for us a way out. We see his grace in action all the time. One of the things I want to encourage us with as we close this morning is, when I see that, am I telling others about it? One of the most powerful things you and I can do during this time when we're a little bit more isolated is to continue to share what God is doing in our lives. So my encouragement to us this morning, when you see God's grace in action, please, please, please let others around you know. We use social media, we use our mouths, uh, we use technology. Let's be about the business of promoting the Lord while we still can.